Pero no es un año. That's the wall there, isn't it? So through walking in circles in the woodland, we've come out on the south elevation as opposed to the west elevation. So now what we need to do is head this way and this will lead us past this enclosure in the wall. And then as we come to the corner, then we should get to this area where there's sort of fewer trees. These two stone walls meet and then we've got access to Cherry Brook. If we can find somewhere there to camp, that would be quite a tasty spot considering yep. I haven't bought water, but you have. Let's go. Might be near a brook, but I don't think we're going to find a camping ground in this. That's the trouble in the forestry itself. It's all sort of bumpy ground, twigs and stuff everywhere. You don't want that puncher in your your tent, ground sheet, or your blow up mattress. Shame we can't make fires on Dartmoor, this would be an ideal place to have a, have a go, wouldn't it? Bushcraft, not tried any yet, have we? Because you're always on Dartmoor. Nesting. So I'm going to go in this little spot here. Bit of a moss bed, be nice and uh, spongy for sleeping on. Pushing the stakes in is easy. So, home for the night. You can see there's actually really quite a big space in here. Well, it took a couple of, two or three full starts, but I got me, uh, got me tent up in the end. It seems, to, it seems to fly up, so I'm definitely going to look to go down the tarp route eventually, when money permits. Last time we camped, we was up at um, Bleak House Ruin, and. Uh, we couldn't get a peg into the ground. We're here, we got the opposite. And it's real soft, it's like leaves and foliage. I think if I fart in there tonight, that tent's just gonna collapse. <laughs> so it'd be interesting to see if we can make it through the night. I think I might have faced it slightly the wrong way. I don't think I paid enough attention to the direction of the wind. If I'd have rotated it another sort of 30 degrees clockwise, it would have got rid of the wind a bit coming in, but. I'm going to be in my sleeping bag, I'm going to be tucked up in my bivvy bag, in my liner, under my tarp. I'll have my head down this end, so I don't really don't think it's going to matter that much unless it decides it's going to blow the pegs out, but nothing's moved or twitched as yet. Trev stuck his nose in the door and sort of seen the space. How's fan me in ya? Yeah, all good, Trev. Oh, God, you've got loads of room in there as well. It's... I can't believe how much room you had in. I didn't look in last time. Nice. Well, last time it was because I was over a bank. There was less yeah. room in here. Oh, you were sort of bunged up the front. Yeah, this time it's brilliant. Yeah, it's ideal, isn't it? Look at that. You know, there's pros and cons with everything. You know, it weighs so much less, takes up so much less space. If it was, you know, if it was all positives, everyone would be doing it. Two of you could use this one tight piece of piss, couldn't you? Yeah, and it's like I'm in there now, and because my bag's all wet, and I'm sort of setting out my bed and that, and it's like I'm all brushed up against. My bag, there's not a lot of room in there. No. But yeah, just looking in here now, I feel quite jealous. Yeah, well I'm quite jealous of your ground sheet, so it swings and roundabouts. Isn't it? Yeah. There is no ground sheet. There's no mozzy mesh door or anything like that. You know, creepy crawlies can get at you in here. You have to bear that in mind. You know, you have to be prepared with the thought of waking up in the middle of the night with something crawling across your face. You know, it could just be a bloody uh, woodlouse or something, you know, or it could be something a bit more unpleasant, but that's part of uh, camping I guess isn't it, it's getting back to nature, being with all the creepies and the crawlies. 
And how does the poles, because you ain't got like pegs in the top of the poles, have you? They just rest there, do they? And it's because it's all under tension. It's proper, isn't it? Here we go. It's a bit pokey, isn't it? Not quite as roomy as nice, is it? But quite a sag on here as well. I can't get anything really taut as I pull stuff. Pegs were pinging out, so there it goes. Well, we've got four hours before it gets dark. Camping. Well, I'm in here, Nathan's tent, we're having coffee. Schoolboy ever. Didn't wash my cup out. So we're just going to swill it. The, cam the camera ain't going to pick up what's in there. It's furry, man. It's, it's a live, sort of living organism growing in the bottom of Trev's bag. We've just got boils and water. Give it a rinse about. Does that mean there's fungus in the bottom of your sack? <laughs> Again. <laughs> I'm chucking water on my f***ing roll now. Invited him in here out of the kindness of my heart so we had space to sit in the dry and share a coffee and chat. And he's done nothing but and just shit the place up. He was getting frustrated earlier about putting his tent up, bringing sticks at me tarp and all sorts of things. <laughs> On purpose. I can imagine it was, yeah. Set your tarp up. Quick, get your tent pegs to stick in the ground. <laughs> no, I am very impressed with the uh, DD Super Light tarp. Maybe I'll enter a competition and try and win one. Just to rub salt in the wound. i got to admit, I'm a little bit sort of green with envy about his nice new free boots that he won for putting the letter in. Hell of a nice looking boots. They got that real thick rubber seam that runs around above the tread where it joins onto the lever. My um, scarpers don't seem to have that and it looks like it's going to be a real durable sort of seal between the tread and the boot itself. So uh, yeah, wonderful. Well, I'm in my tent now, in out of the rain, but I've sort of dragged a lot of wet clothes and things in here and a wet bag and wet boots. There seems to be a lot of water in this tent now. I'm sleeping this side. Got my bag over here, down the bottom. There's my boots and that. It is a small tent. It's a lot colder than it was last time. It feels colder. My hands are absolutely freezing. Look at that. My fingers white. That one. Bought myself a book to read. At some point soon I'll be cooking some tea. Got a boil in the bag. And then we're about two kilometres away from the car. So in the morning we'll pack up everything in the rain. So not too long a slog back to the car. Anyway, this is me in the tent now. Now my f***ing light is not... But I'm lucky. Oh, for f***'s sake. I've got that loaded up with a boil in the bag inside. Forgot to read how long. I think it's about 12 minutes, isn't it? I am quite literally boiling it in a bag. Steaming up in here. It's like a sauna in here. Got the two jet pools going. So I ain't cold all of a sudden. No. Nate's gone for a dry mix bag today. Keeping weight down is always an eye. You carry two litres of water around with you all day, innit? Yeah. I mean, I've probably saved two and a half kilos on you straight out of the gate, haven't I? Yeah. Yeah, I had a real pleasurable experience going to fill in my water up from the stream, which was shit. Again, yeah. like the tarp and yep. the tent. Fours and against, in there. Fours and body cords. didn't take out the air absorber. Oh, mate. It's like a flavour pouch in a pot noodle, isn't it? It's got to be, in it? It's not contaminant at all. It's in a sealed packet, isn't it? But surely they must know that's going to happen. There's mine. I boiled it in the bag. Oh, heat for seven or eight minutes. I went for 16. Burn it. <laughs> <laughs> going to eat. How's yours, Nath? Proper Antle and Gretel, that is, son. 
well, we really enjoyed this, and uh, you guys can watch whatever's coming up next. Here it is now. Well, I'm in now for the night. I have just lied down and realised I need a piss. So I'm in my sleeping bag, waiting to warm up. My feet have got freezing cold over there when I sat out with Nate. But I'll just take my mind off it. I'm going to just read a bit of book. It's the sort of thing I do when I'm sitting in a confined space in the middle of Dartmoor on an Easter holiday weekend. So I've got the uh, Van Gogh sleeping bag again. It's a great sleeping bag. Last time I was warm. But what I have noticed is that the zip is very close to the material. When you do it up, it catches quite a lot. Didn't then. But apart from that, so far so good. It's nice, warm. Plus I've got two liners in here as well. I know, overkill, right? I've always been someone who feels the cold. I've always hated camping. So the fact that I'm out here doing this, out of season, still surprises me to this day. You only live once, didn't you? So I'm just kind of sat here in the tarp, curled up in my sleeping bag. Hell of a cosy. Got my long johns on. Inside me um, mounting hardware, Lamina 20. Sleeping bag, lovely and toasty. Got another hour of light left. I don't know, I'll just check the weather app, see if there is a break in this rain at all. No break in the rain. And uh, I did suddenly clock that there's a weather warning issued for today and tomorrow. Well, Nathan's just given us some good news. Yep, looks like we've chosen another fucking great night to come out wild camping. Apparently, we are forecast from 8 o'clock this evening through till 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Winds in excess of 40 mile an hour. I'm a bit worried again. Last time I had hardly any peg coverage into the earth. This time there's no actual earth. They've just been held by ancient leaves. So, uh, yeah, a bit of wind and this thing could just collapse. So This is the first day of April, yeah? We last camped on, like, the last day... Or last two days of December. So three months have elapsed since we last camped. And temperature, precipitation, and wind are almost exactly the same. It is like an identical weather forecast. I mean, hopefully we're in a more sheltered spot than we were last time. Maybe we get a tree blow over on us. Who knows? So I'm just waiting. Wondering what I'm doing here. Roll on summer. It's gone dark now. It's um, half past eight. It hasn't got any warmer. But what has happened is um, my Sony Handycam has died. I don't mean the battery's on out, but it's just um, ceased to be. It's been eight years I've had that camcorder. So I'm one camera down. Why am I here? A piece of nylon between me and the elements. How are you doing over there, mate? Oh, loving life, mate. Yeah? Yeah, it's beautiful. Would you say this has been the, uh, your best camping so far? If I think back to the times that you and me have been camping together, we got great miss. Right. We were both in a tent. Moby was there. I was fighting. He was fighting. Yeah. We got Wisman's Wood. This time last year. Yeah, it rained. And I was under a shitty small tarp. Yeah. Then, what was it? West Oakman? Yeah, I think it was West Oakland, wasn't it? Or something like that. Anyway, I had to walk through the middle of the night to the car, drive through the middle of the night back to the campsite, and then sleep in the car. Yeah. Not a great camping experience. Then we got our last one over Christmas, which, let's face it, was f***ing horrendous. And then we got this one. So, i got to be honest, mate, splitting hairs, really. <laughs> Look what I've got. After dark on Dartmoor. Well, it is after dark. I am on Dartmoor. Festering in my own stench. I stink. 
<laughs> Where have we been today? We've been to Bella Vitor. Let me read you a tale associated with Bella Vitor. A beautiful girl once lived in a farmhouse near Huckleberry Bridge. She had many admirers, but the one she favoured most was a lad called Tom White of Postbridge. He was so much in love with her that he thought nothing of walking five miles between them after work every night just to continue their courtship. One night he stayed with her longer than he should have, and on his way home it was after midnight by the time he reached Bella the Tour. He was startled to hear the sounds of singing and laughter from among the rocks of the Tour. He found himself standing in full view of a large crowd of pixies who were dancing merrily. Before he could hide, they grabbed and pulled him over onto a level patch of grass. Here they formed a circle around him and began dancing with ever increasing speed. Tom found himself forced to whirl and caper around in time with the pixie music, totally unable to stop. It was not until sunrise that the dance ended. The pixies vanished among the boulders and Tom was left stretched and exhausted on the turf. The tale has a sad sequel. Tom was so frightened by his night's adventure that he determined never to risk another encounter with the little folk. And so he did not visit the girl ever again. Sounds like a poor excuse to me. Sounds like you stayed there late one night with this girl, you know, trying to get his end wet. She's like, no, no. He's probably gone somewhere else on the way home. Tried it with a friend or something. So he's late back to his mum's. His mum's like, where have you been? And he's like, oh, pixies. Pixies had me, scared the crap out of me. Dancing like they was mum. Yeah, yeah. Then she goes, are you going back to see that girl? Nah, nah. Scared of the pixies now, mum. I ain't walking there. Not with pixies about. So you hear a lot about pixies. I wonder if we would get to see one. Someone claims they heard. Pixies laughing on our um, last camping video, Nate. Did they? Yeah. Maybe they'll hear it again here. Yeah. Might be a pleasant change from the sound of the rain hitting the tarp. <laughs> yeah. Right, basically, we've got two issues tonight, YouTube. One is you might very well enjoy them, but Trev and his Dartmoor legends. Two, the noise of rain hitting this tarp is doing my head in. So, what I'm trying to do is fashion some sort of earplug out of tissue paper just to dumb the noise down just a little bit. God, I love peace and quiet. Just going to try and roll it up into a little ball and try and just. I think it's had absolutely no effect at all. So what have you been doing over there for the last couple of hours in there? Um, rolling from my right side over onto my back and then from my back over onto my left side and then back over onto my back again to my right side and then back to my back and over to the left. Yeah. I've been um, with my eyes closed visualizing that the pitter patter pitter patter of the rain is actually crackling logs in the fire and I'm sat next to it feeling the heat. It's gonna help me through this night. Trev? Yeah. I need the wee again. Good luck with that. Cheers mate. Till morning, so I just want to get out of here now. <laughs> so basically, my roll mat's like a pontoon floating in the lake, just a puddle, 
my feet are wet, soaked from my bivy bag. It's only one o'clock in the morning. I haven't had that much sleep. Quite happily go home now. Pretty much f***ed off with the whole adventure. But can't go home because it's pitch black out there. And uh, got like another four hours, four and a half hours at least, until some sort of light. Just check the weather, they don't really give the rain letting up through the night at all, so it's only going to get worse. So this little puddle, probably going to become a big puddle. Um, this is why you don't go camping when they put these extreme weather warnings out. This is why it doesn't matter if uh, you're running out of videos for your YouTube channel or not. You just fucking suck it up and you wait until it's better weather, more appropriate for camping. So, this is shit, basically, in a nutshell. First flicker of light is creeping into the tent. That was a horrendous night. I don't know how they've got, I haven't heard anything peep from him yet. Hopefully he's still there. He hasn't been pixie led. No, uh, it's half six in the morning. And uh, it has been probably the second most unpleasant night I've ever spent uh, camping in my entire life. My feet are soaked, my sleeping bag has absorbed a lot of water and I'm kind of marooned on a little roll mat island in the middle of a puddle underneath my tarp. Didn't get a lot of sleep, maybe four and a half hours max. Even then it wasn't proper sleep as you'd want it to be. Uh, you know, the 40 mile an hour winds as promised did not fail to deliver. Uh, my sleeping bag sort of started to lose thermal efficiency at about 2-3 o'clock in the morning and uh, I've been struggling to keep the heat in and uh, I'm just constantly repositioning in the night. I haven't been able to stretch my legs out for about 4 hours so uh, yeah it's been an interesting night. So I'm just looking at view engine trying to work our way back. We're going to start going and packing up in a minute and then we're just going to run for it I think. I'm not even going to bother with a coffee here. Nath has had an horrendous night. I've got to tidy this ramshackle shithole up. I hate putting sleeping bags back into the bag. I've got to wrap up a wet tent. That's going to in turn make my fingers freezing cold. So yeah, it's uh, been a nice experience camping. Looking forward to it being over. I hope you not enjoyed this. <laughs> right, sleeping bag. This hasn't gone right. Uh, ready? Oh, lovely wet socks inside down the Oh, I'm getting there. I've warmed up just trying to pack this sleeping bag. I am sweating. Oh, done it. There's not a puddle here, it's bone dry. Oh, where I was? Yeah. Look at it. That there was twice as big. Half of it is in my bag, in my sleeping bag. And then look, look at that up there, ready to burst this bank and trickle down there, right into me. Hell of a dust on me. Well here we are, packed up, ready to get home. It was a horrendous night, wasn't it? Yeah. He had a worse night than me, so for that I'm grateful. I always seem to have the worst night. Do you think it's linked to sleeping in a tarp? <laughs> Good pick, isn't it? Ready to move, isn't it, mate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see how long this takes us. Shouldn't be 
Morning. Morning. Fancy going for a hike and wild camp on Dartmoor this weekend, Nath? No. Not really. I think he's had it now, hiking and wild camping. It's not the hiking or the wild camping. I love hiking and I love wild camping. Why I don't f like it's the weather! <laughs> oh my god! Every f time it's raining! We have one weekend where we can both make and it's, we're tied to it, you know? It'd be better if we were more free, wouldn't it? And just like, alright, it's looking good this weekend, let's go this weekend. But life gets in the way, doesn't it? Yeah. Still, when we're getting paid to do it professionally. Yeah, are we up? Hey, we, can, uh, we can do it whenever we want. It's like hard work. We've got to go sweet hard work. Yeah. You wouldn't pay a care getting wet, bit wet through the night if he's getting paid danger money for it, would you? No, that's it. You're laughing about it. Even then, you might be able to choose to go to another country where the weather's better. It's like we'll film the hiking scenes in the UK and we'll film the camping scenes in the south of Spain. <laughs> Good idea. Well, I just want to go home now, mate. So I do, mate. Let's yeah. just say goodbye to everyone. Yeah. Thank you for watching. You've been watching Summit or Nothing. We have been camping on Dartmoor. I am Trev, he is Naif. Yes, I'm Naif and he's Trevor. We did the camping thing. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, comment subscribe, share. share. Yeah. Do you want to do that again where I don't say every five seconds? That's fine. <laughs> it just shows how we feel about it. Frustration. <laughs> so, a river dare to. Good night. See you later. Here we are, Penn Beacon. Oh, it's raining now. See that? Wet. I'll try and get this camera away in a minute. We're going to look for somewhere to set up camp, I reckon. Good time, don't you? I think so, yeah. Get out the wind. Yeah. Trickly. So, uh, here I am again in my budget nature hike. My trusty nature hike. So far, it's done me proud. Uh, Tom's turned up in his ooh, Mr. Emissar over here. The new tent he's bought himself the Elixir One. It's got his tidy little tent, isn't it? Yeah, it is a tidy tent, but I think it's a little operator area here. Like you can see, like that seems way off. That should be there. So I've just got to do a little bit of tweaking. A bit of tweaking. Yeah, well, mine looks like that. I've done a bit of tweaking to bring it back into shape, but. Yeah, this is brand new, so I'm quite pleased that all the pegs were here. So this is a one man tent. You've got your little side entrance. Just in a space, not too much to fill, so hopefully it'll keep you So you keep all your gear outside here. But the main thing for me as well as I like cooking, I can sit up in this one. I've still got six inches of head height in here, and that can open a bit more as well, so I've got a good space for cooking here, and all my gear. Yeah. So what I don't consider it very heavy, but the lightweight community would. It just comes in at just over two kilos, but you can get that down low without bringing the protective thing and bits and bobs. So like the nature hike, it's got the ground mat again. You bring additional, yeah, it feels similar sort of material. It feels a bit thicker, I must say, to the nature hike. The nature hike is very thin compared to that. Really, because that, that feels that really, thin. that feels durable, more durable than the nature hike. That's where my van goes great, because that feels like it's leather. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it weighs like it is. Well. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to do a bit more of a review on it because if you look online, there are reviews on the Elixir 2, 3, 4, yeah. nothing on the Elixir 1. So, yeah, I mean, if you're trying to make an informed decision, it's not helpful if someone else hasn't tested it out for you. So, hopefully, no. tonight I can take a bit of an informed decision and maybe you can help me do a review on it because I'm enjoying your reviews at the moment. And I just make it up as I go along. <laughs> look at something and go, oh, we'll talk about this bit now. And if you did any rib stop. Yeah, I don't know all that. It's red, red and grey. <laughs> red and grey although that is that important is it's red and grey it's colour coded so it's twat proof because yeah everything, everything goes grey, together clips to a grey thing and everything that's red clips to a red thing all right so while tom's tweaking now i'm going to set up the uh tarp and we've just got a bit of a, a base area then for cooking sound good sounds great It's been so long since I've set up the Didi hammock tarp that I cannot remember for the life of me how it really goes. 
job we sort of chose sooner than later to camp. <laughs> right, we're heading down now to get some water. Got the uh, Sawyer Mini again. I haven't used it for ages. I cannot for the life of me remember how to put that f***ing DD hammock tarp up. You're very calm about it, I was going to say. <laughs> Throwing a few obscenities about here and there. Because I thought we'd have a little walk. And uh, chill the f*** out. Here's the spring. Taking on a tip. I can't remember who gave it to me. Someone said, use a plastic bottle and they're easier to fill up. So, that's what I've done, look. All right, so we've got plenty of water. The plastic bottle didn't really work as much because you get to a point where you can't squeeze it anymore and you're scrunching the bottle up and the last sort of bit in the bottle wasn't coming out any quicker than a trickle. You couldn't get the pressure like you can in a squeezy bottle, so I think I'll just get a bigger squeezy bottle. Never knew. Japanese company. Mm -hmm. A litre and a half, you said. Yeah, and you can roll it up and tie it all together with that with your filter inside it. That's cracker. So what, you get two of them, one for the filter and one to filter into? I just got one and I filter into my... Oh right, so that's unfiltered in there. Yeah, that's my dirty water yeah. that I plug the filter on in. And he's ready to go later. Yeah. It's a good idea. Why well, have I never thought of that? Oh, because it's a good idea. <laughs> Here we are, back to camp. That was a hard slog up there. I felt that. What have you got there, Tom? I've got a flapjack. Oh, is that a summit or nothing flapjack? It certainly is. <laughs> really nice. Yeah. It's like the, the goo to crunch ratio is perfect. Yeah, I do. I'll have one too then. Got one in here. I made a new batch, you see. So let's see what it's like. It's like three cakes in one. It's like Reese's Pieces, a flapjack, and a fruit loaf. Mmm, that mm. is good. I do love a flapjack. Losing light now. It's nice though, isn't it? Calm. It's yeah, really calm. Yeah, we found a good spot. Yeah. I think the wind must have died down as well because it was blowing a bit when we was putting the tents up, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, here I am in the tent. Bit of sad news. The uh, inflatable mat is losing its life. It's, uh, I've blown it up a minute ago and now it's sort of gone. Obviously I do bring the other one but that's not very comfortable. But anyway, it's been a good day. Nice to meet Tom. It's always a bit daunting when you're thinking um, you're meeting someone who, let's be honest, all I've seen of him is his hands cooking around a tranger. 10 o'clock, generally a nice day. I mean, um, yeah, we've been arranging this for a little while and finally everything aligned that we could have a little outing together. Obviously it's a bit weird because you don't know what someone's going to be like. I've got an idea. I've watched his channel for a while now and uh, I've sort of got the gist of him. Whereas for him, I'm a complete stranger. I think generally we've got a similar sense of humour, getting on well. It was all going really well until just after dinner when he turned around and just said, Tom, paint me like one of your French girls. So anyway, now I'm in the tent, settling down for the night. It's raining fair out there now got an audio book again so I'm going to just stick some headphones in and have a bit of a chill. Hopefully I'll sleep at some point, at gunpoint. We've left the top set up, we've just got a few of the cooking bits underneath there so hopefully that won't take off in the night, shouldn't we? Ready for bed now, all cosy, zipped up in the tent. Yeah, half ten, I don't get that kind of night in the other world you know there's always something to do i go to bed at 11 12 always a uh, something to binge on netflix some editing i need to do or something i didn't do in the day that i've got to catch up with and you step out onto the moors and we pitched up on a place we thought looked suitable and now i'm in bed and it's like half 10 i'm relatively warm i've got shelter yeah i'm really looking forward to just having an early night i'm really looking forward to waking up having breakfast and carrying on yeah, it's brilliant. It's good to get away. So you uh, you set your bedding up, get comfy, get your long johns and your fireballs on, get comfy and warm, zip yourself into your sleeping bag, and then uh, you need a piss. Yeah, that's just happened. Toilets. Oh, I ain't getting out in this. Not in a minute. I'll hang on. You never know, it might slow down a bit the weather. So 
so is life, so is camping. The way of the hill. The way of the hill. Hey, yes, Tom? Have you seen the weather forecast? Do you know what? I was thinking about looking, but I haven't looked, no. Alright, we're in for a treat. I've just looked and it's a, a weather warning in place from the Met Office for the sort of area we're in. Expecting to get pretty wet and pretty windy. Um, three o'clock should be a, a lot of fun. Well, what did you expect coming out with me camping? Um, <laughs> only the best. Uh, yeah, I only looked because I got a message from my dad saying make sure you don't hang around tomorrow because there's 60 mile an hour winds forecast. Oh, for Christ's sake. It's, see, that's what it looked like at the beginning of the week, but then it looked better as the week went on. Yeah, it did It, it did look better, but... Um, it's changed its mind. Changed its mind. <laughs> oh, we got that to look forward to then. Yeah, strong winds from the southwest, um, which is the side of the hill that we chose to camp on, wasn't it? I think it is, isn't it? <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, hopefully the tents stay up and the tarp's still there in the morning. Yeah, well, it's a good test for my new tent and my new gear, and it's a good test for your um, pitching skills. Hopefully it's not going to pick up the tarp like a sail, because it's all opened up, isn't it? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm feeling pretty cosy at the moment, so I'm happy with it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm quite toasty at the minute. Yeah. I'm sure it'll be a cosy night. It just might be a bit of a horrible pack-up tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Morning, buddy. All right. Good luck. Sweet dreams. Godspeed. <laughs> yeah. The wind is starting to pick up now. I don't know if we're up to 40 miles an hour or not, but it's getting lively out there. I'm a bit concerned about the tarp. <laughs> I just hope that the wind doesn't come in the front. Fuck it. And get rid of it. But the temperature in here had dropped. I've got started to get cold, so I've put another layer on. I don't usually put this one on. And also, I've tested out in these gloves those hand warmers. The little, they look like silicon gel packets. You just shake them up, shove them in the gloves. So I just thought, mm, I've got them. I just well use them. Me, Matt, has shrunk and I'm feeling a lot of cold coming through the ground. But anyway, it's midnight, the wind's coming. Let's see how the nature like goes today. Oh nature like, don't let me down. Some some wind now. A minute down. A little bit cold. So let's see what happens. Oh, still tense holding up. Probably outlast me. The wind started now. And the tent is moving all over the place. Look at this light bouncing around and this is just the start of it. So this is going to be the test tonight and it's also nice to know that the wind has changed direction and it's not it's not coming in the entrance way as we thought but it's coming from the side so I'm getting complete batter in here and it's noisy. You wouldn't think it's the same night that we sat out there earlier Drinking our coffees, it was just still as hell. Well, all good fun. So we have to get out in the middle of the night and walk home because our tents have ripped to pieces. Oh, wasn't quite the weather forecast that I saw. I'm just putting faith in my gear. So this is a real test for my tent and for my own. <laughs> my, my own stamina. So we'll see which breaks first. I don't think I'll get much sleep. I mean, 
the wind will sort of feel like it's stopping, dying down and then pick up again. You can hear our communal area flapping quite heftily. If you can hear it flapping, it's still there. So, all that had happened there was the outside door had worked itself loose. And the tarp seems quite out there. I don't think it's blown away. But I think it's blown down. It does sound like it's on the floor, rattling about. You know, I said it was cold earlier, and I put them little hand warmers in my gloves, I've put the extra jump in. But I'm really toasty again now, really hot. I think I've had a couple of hours sleep without looking at the clock, I don't know what time it is. 306. This was when it was going to be worse, at 3 o'clock. Yeah, I should charge people to have the summit on an experience. Well, people paid to go like round like the passage to Terra and get scared and stuff like that. Maybe people would pay to come and have a miserable experience in a tent. You certainly enjoy watching them on the channel. I think I've just come up with a new, a lucrative new scheme there. I really do rate this tent so far. I'm saying that because I'm dry and comfortable. It was going to be the windiest at three. Here, yeah, I guess tomorrow we won't be hanging about. Whoa, look at it. It's just got hell of a gusty. The whole tent was pressed in on me then. <laughs> I thought that's it, it's gone. It's collapsed. As soon as it laid off, it is uh, back up again. I keep thinking I'm hearing snaps and snicks and tears. We're quite exposed here on the side of a hill. <laughs> it's a long night. <laughs> my tent is. It woke me up because it was on me. But I was like, oh no. But actually, it's still like doing amazingly well. It's just really f***ing windy, but I'm surprised I've actually managed to sleep somewhat. I had weird dreams, really weird dreams. I dreamt that I was camping with my dad. We woke up in the morning and realised that we'd pitched on a motorway. And I'm cold. What I do is I get the top of my sleeping bag and I tuck it in like I'm a human tortilla. But then I have to breathe, so... I collapse here now, look. It's right down. The frame's still standing, but it's, uh... It's flat. It's flat for me, isn't it? Still all connected, it's still all hanging on the frame. The frame's still upright. I don't know if I'll be able to get out, re-peg that side, I might have a try. Pull that side tight. It sort of makes you think, do you just count your losses and pack up? But I've got two f tents to pack up in the dark. This has been something else. I stuck my head out, had a look, and the tarp's there. It's flat on the ground. But it hasn't gone anywhere, it's just pegged in alright. It's just collapsed. Where are we now? Five o'clock. Sunrise, Yelverton. The sun will rise at 6.42am. another hour and 42 minutes. I think the most... Oh, Jesus. I think the most annoying thing about all this is... This morning when I was driving to meet Trev, this wasn't remotely in the forecast. I'm not saying I wouldn't have done it anyway. It's just... Would have been nicer to wake up on a stillish morning without feeling like my tent was going to shit itself. There is no back of my tent anymore. Right, I see the corners come out here, look. 
pull out. I can try and put that back. Got some other bit of upright. Look at how much is dense in here. It's still pegged in though. It's like penny fan. seems to be fairing up all right Tom yeah it's doing all right really it's doing all right it tends me a few times in the night but I think I trust the flex a bit more than yeah I might just collapse this tarp in a minute and back it up you can't really hear a word he's saying that's what I was trying to sleep in <laughs> holding up well. Oh, that's half my home for the night. <laughs> I can't believe it. Well, sort of giving up now. I'm packing up. Dawn is on the horizon. Um, Tom managed to make a couple of coffees. But yeah, he got the fans going. In this, enough to boil up some water. No, he's packing up. I think it's going to be a two-man job to take the tents down. We've had quite a lot of rainfall in the night as well, so our route home might be waterlogged. So the gators are on. As soon as it stops, it springs back to life. It might not be so bad if I was facing the wind, you know, but when the wind turns, it comes side on. I don't stand a chance against 50 mile an hour wind. But, better than the tarp. You think if that was Naif out, that's where he would have been. But then his probably would have been put up a bit better than mine. <laughs> Alright, packing up. Well, survived the camp. Just about. Just to walk home now. Just to walk to the car, into the wind. Yeah. Of course it is. It's tent spanish alright, look, it's still... Still the shape it's supposed to be. More or less. My poor old thing, look at it. Standing up to it though. That's what it's for though, isn't it? Isn't it? Did you keep dry last night? Yeah, it was dry. Same. Just not much room in there once it starts <laughs> caving in. Yeah. Well, looking forward to ripping it down and fucking getting home. Cook your breakfast first. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you'd done well to get the coffees on. Yeah, yeah, it was a bit of a fight, but yeah, it hasn't happened. Crit while we're ahead. Yeah. It's been a venture though, isn't it? Yeah, I've had fun somehow. Yeah. <laughs> it's like two different days in one, eh? But it was Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> well, that's it too. <laughs> so, this one in first? I think so, yeah. Partly there. The wind, yeah. That's painful to watch. You that wouldn't is. be enjoying that, would you? In there now. I'm enjoying it now. <laughs> yeah, this is silly weather to camp in, isn't it? <laughs> oh, that looks a bit more like my tent now. That is some strong wind, isn't it? Look at it. D1. That was straight then, was it? Yeah. Very disappointing with that. Yeah. Especially the MSR, you'd think. Yeah. Stand up to it, wouldn't you? Yeah. You think they'd have designed that to work. And there as well, look. No, definitely straight, was I? Yeah, definitely straight. No. There's me singing its praises at night. Gutted. Ready to go? Yeah, 
pretty off. epic evening. This is one to remember, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> We've reached the river. There's a track the other side. We're going to try and stay this side and hopefully somewhere to pass. Or I'll use you as a bridge. Yeah. <laughs> but we're going to keep walking that way because that's the way home. So it'd be stupid to walk that way. Nothing out in how was that? Thanks for arranging that weather. That was, that was <laughs> it good. wouldn't have been the true experience without it, would it? So. No, I, uh, yeah, no, not at all. I had a lot of fun though, even in the hefty wind. Uh, it was hefty, wasn't it? Yeah, really hefty. It'd be Fine. interesting to see how hefty it was. Yeah, it was, um, yeah, loud. It was, it was quite a brutal yeah. evening, but I was really pleased with the tent because it was standing up, and then I was really not impressed with the tent. So. <laughs> Buckled it, a bit. It broke, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's gutting little things, especially when equipment that you spend decent yeah. money on. Like MSR stands for, is it Mountain Search and Rescue? You'd think they'd have a clue how to make a tent. Yeah. So they might want to sort that out. Hopefully, I just got one bad one. I don't want to no. bad mouth them. But I think that was a fair test, you know. I think it's not me. I'm not being unreasonable by saying it's a bad tent if it didn't deliver as a tent. No. Yeah, there you go. Anyway, but that was the only thing. Everything else was good. Seen a lot of sights. It was great. The food was oh, it was brilliant. I can't recommend cooking your own food out on the trail enough. It was like freshly cooked food and that curry last night. You'd have paid good money for that in a restaurant. You know, it was tasty. And anyway, so thank you for watching. Thanks to Tom for coming along. Good bit of company. Good laugh. Good chat. Good cook. Good enough. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, mate. Cool. So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. More adventures coming up soon. Yes. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>